Welcome back to some more Pi Game and Python tutorials, everybody. I'm Rudy Linnell, your host. <laughs> I don't know what I really host. I mean, I'm not hosting anything. I'm not hosting a party. I'm not making you brownies. I'm just, I'm just writing code. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's jump into this tutorial. In the last tutorial, we finally created a few sprites, and we, um, we made some nice functions that we're able to add them to the screen. Uh, we were looking at groups and that sort of thing, but right now they're pretty cheesy. Like, we got a, we got a, a red block and a blue block. Well, let's do a bit more with that. Now we're going to get into images. Like, legit images. Not just colored squares, but real images. I'm going to Google, and I'm going to look up I'm gonna look up something. It's Valentine's Day. <laughs> uh, hope you guys, hope you guys don't mind me making tutorials on Valentine's Day. I'm going out to dinner with my girlfriend later on in the day. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Um, let's look. Let's look for from brick sprites. Brick sprites. That's exactly what we want. Let's look at this guy. That's pretty small. 64 by 64. That works just fine. Let's view that image and let's save a copy of it. Uh, you, you can tell I've already done this, because I was preparing beforehand, but yeah, I've got a uh, brick.png, and we're going to overwrite that with the brick image that we just that we just got. Okay, let's go back to our code here, and let's finally start to look at some images in Python, in Pygame. Let's create a new function for our block object in the block class, and let's say it's set image. Of course, we've got the self keyword. And let's have an argument called file name. By default, that can be none. Um, that way, I don't know, it's a little bit nicer in case we, for some reason, accidentally call set image without any arguments. Stupid precaution, but whatever, it's good. If file name is not equal to none, then obviously we've passed something into it. So that way we can go ahead and uh, self set the self image to equal pygame.image. Ooh, you guys see what I did there? New submodule. We're gonna have to check that out. Dot load file name. All right. Let's check out the documentation one more time. Um, I think I had to create a new tab for all that. No. Okay. Image. Image is what we're looking at next. You can see it over up the top here. Pygame module for image transfer. We can load a new image from a file, which is exactly what we just did. We can save an image to a disk. Whoa, that's really cool. Let's check that out. You can save any surface to a file name. Sweet. We'll have to look at that later. For now, we have loaded an image, though. We've just loaded. Load an image from the file source. You can pass either a file name or a Python file-like object. That's pretty handy. I didn't know that. Pygame will automatically determine the image type, whether or not it's like a GIF or a bitmap, and it'll create a new source object, sorry, surface object from that data. In some cases, it might need to know the file extension, GIF images and end in GIF. If you pass a raw file like object, you might want to pass the original file name as the name hint argument. Okay. Oh, name hint argument is, is right there. So if we use an object in Python, it might need to know a file name to begin with. Fascinating. <laughs> the return service will contain the same color format, color key, and alpha transparency as the file that it came from. Well, our image is just a straight block, 64 by 64. There isn't really any transparency or anything that we have to worry about, so we're good in that regard at least for now. I might not be able to support all image types. Alright. At minimum, it will support <laughs> uncompressed BMP. That's good. Um, oh, we, uh, we should be able to test if we can include um, other file types like a PNG, JPEG, and a GIF. I honestly know that I can use this PNG file, and uh, we should be okay. But, okay. Now that we've read through the documentation, let's take a look back at our code. Self.rect, we actually have to reset now that we've changed the image. Because this image, when we when we set it, by default we're creating the like cute little cube, the little square that we have, but if we set the image, it overwrites the actual image that we're using. So that means we have to overwrite the rect as well. Later on, I'll actually write some code that can do this for us, or at least kind of make it so that it's not duplicated code. But for now, this is what we're going to end up using. Uh, that refers to when I work with the origin that I was telling you guys about in the earlier video. So for now, we're okay. What we do need to do, however, is set a function, or at least call a function, with our a block. A block is equal to the block that we've created earlier, and we can go ahead and set an image, because we just created that function, and we can use brick.png, which is the file that we just saved. 
Keep in mind the file is in the exact same folder as this code here. Um, that should be standard. Um, if, you've, if you want to add a path, you certainly can. If you want to use a, another module like OS to kind of find an absolute path, that'd be good for you. That way you can at least keep it um, changing, or at least it's, it's dynamic, not static. And, uh, good pragmatic programming habits. But for now, this keeping it in, this, in the same folder will work just fine for us. Let's run the code. No errors, and check it out. We got our red block, and we got our regular brick. Super cool. So simple, pretty, pretty simple. All it takes is like one kind of function call, image.load, pygame.image.load, and then since we created a function that can do that for our sprite, we're good to go. Wow. Pretty simple tutorial. A lot, a lot shorter than the other one. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you're enjoying the series, and, uh, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.